Hello YouTube and welcome to the next train guide video. In this series we take a look at one loco or unit in each video, looking at the history and background before taking a look at the technical specifications and then any driving techniques which are pertinent to that particular train. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Class 70 diesel electric locomotive. The Class 70 locomotives are six axle COCO heavy mixed freight locomotives. COCO stands for the wheel arrangement on each bogey, where there are three axles and six wheels per bogey, and there are two bogies per locomotive. If a loco was called Bobo, for example, that would be a loco which has two axles and four wheels to each bogey. They were ordered by Freightliner UK from General Electric in November 2007, with a total of 30 of the locomotives placed on order. They were constructed at General Electric's plant in Erie, Pennsylvania. The units were designed in a collaboration between Freightliner, who required a more powerful freight locomotive, and General Electric, who were looking for an entry into the European rolling stock market. Forming the General Electric Powerhaul class of mainline diesel electric locomotives, the Class 70 consists of three main subclasses depending on which country they were going to and each have a special code. On the UK railways the code was PH37ACMI. For mainland Europe it was PH37ACI and elsewhere built to a gauge of 1067 mm which is narrower track than the standard 1435 mm found in the UK. The code was PH37ACMAI. Much of the input on the design of the cab was actually taken from drivers and the design also features heating, air conditioning and additional acoustic insulation as well as dialless electronic driving displays so you'll see when we look in the cab there's a number of computer displays in there. The unusual shape of the loco is actually a crashworthiness feature. The locomotive has a 20% higher power to weight ratio compared to similar classes and it was ordered to match the existing haulage capacity with an increased fuel efficiency. It was designed to be more efficient than its contemporaries, both in its general operation and under braking, where the locomotive has regenerative braking fitted which is used to supply energy to the power auxiliary motors which results in an increased power efficiency. The first units were produced in July 2009 and they were put through two months of extensive testing. It took three weeks to then apply modifications to prepare for shipping to the UK by sea. Class 70 number 70001 and 70002 arrived at Newport Docks in Wales on the 8th of November 2009. This was the first delivery of a General Electric locomotive to be used in service on the British Railway Network. A further 13 locomotives were then delivered between December 2009 and December 2011. On the 5th of January 2011 there was an incident with one of the deliveries. 70012 was involved in an incident where it fell approximately 5 metres from the lifting cradles back into the ship's hold which resulted in fatal damage to the locomotive's frame. The unit was then returned back to General Electric for repair work. In operational tests, 70001 was able to haul a 30 wagon train consisting of 60 ISO containers, while 70002 hauled a 19 hopper 1,300 tonne coal train in December 2009. The Class 70 in Train Simulator has two liveries, one which comes with the train, which is Freightliner, and Cola Slivery, which is available from DP Simulation for free, and in fact I will put the link to this reskin in the description of this video. In November 2013, Colas Rail announced that it had agreed a deal to procure 10 Class 70 locomotives, with new builds to be assembled in Erie, Pennsylvania for entry into service in 2014.
The order included a Turkish-built demonstrator 70099, which has been renumbered as 7801, and the remainder of Freightliner's original order option of 30 locos. The Class 70 is 71 feet 2 inches long, 8 feet 8 inches wide and 12 feet 10 inches high. The locomotive weighs 129 tonnes and has a fuel capacity of 1,300 gallons, which is 6,000 litres. The wheel diameter is 42 inches, which is 1,067 millimetres. The engine in the Class 70 is a General Electric Powerhaul P616, which has a maximum power output of 3,690 horsepower. As this is a diesel-electric locomotive, the engine is not connected to the wheels, but acts as a generator, and it generates electricity to power the traction motors. The maximum tractive effort is 120,000 pounds of force, with a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour. The braking system uses a mixture of air and regenerative braking. Now that we have covered both the history and technical specifications of the Class 70, let's take a look inside the cab. Here we are in the cab of Class 70 at Carlisle Kingmore Yard. As you can see it is an ultra-modern cab and you can see the computer screens on the dashboard there. So if we move over to the driver's side now, I'll quickly show you around the controls. Unfortunately, many of the buttons and controls don't work in the Class 70 in Train Simulator. But if we look over here, I'll just show you from left to right what we've got in the cab. So, the first thing that actually works is the sander, which is here. And so you press X to control the sander. Next to that, we have the AWS reset button. And then we have the horn, which is a two-tone horn with the space and B key. Next over here we have the locomotive brake, so this controls only the brake on the locomotive itself. Here we have the train brake, which controls the brakes on the entire train. I've removed the handle there. And then here we have the throttle, which is an 8 position throttle from idle to position 8 and you can see there that it actually shows you what position the throttle is in so how much power you've got next to that we've got the reverser which I'm now going to move forward and then reset the AWS self test sequence we then get a I believe it's the fire alarm test which is the other bell that you heard over here we have the emergency brake button and then there's no, no other buttons over here that actually work. Here we've got one of the two computer displays which both display the same thing. So in the middle there you can see the speedometer which is an analog readout and also has a digital readout below that. Over here is the brake gauges. So now if I apply the brakes more you can see that the pressure has fallen here and has gone up here. We have here the TPWS system, which I don't believe is simulated in Train Simulator. In this particular locomotive, should I say. Over here we have the AWS Sunflower indicator, which illuminates when we have a cautionary signal or a cautionary Morpeth board warning. Again, over here we have the other computer display. And then up here we have the two wiper controls, which you can actually control independently. So if I zoom out now and I click wipers right, you can see the, that the right wiper is working. And now turn on the left one. And then turn them off independently as well. If you just use the V key on the keyboard, which is the normal wiper button, then it only turns on the driver's side wiper. Another feature with the Class 70, which uh, harkens to its American design, is that you actually enter the cab from the rear, just here, and now if I go outside you can actually see a walkway along the side of the locomotive, and so you walk into the cab from the rear from the walkway, which is a very American design. And so now we've looked at the controls of the Class 70, I'm just going to get it moving, and then that will be it for this video. Now that we are ready to move, I'm going to release the brakes. And as you can see, the pressure is climbing now on the computerized displays. I'm just going to apply a low power setting to get us moving. And 
And so now we're in step two of power and you can see we're just starting to move. With a freight train it is important not to apply too much power or you will get wheel slip. And also you can snag the couplings which could potentially damage them when starting to move. And so now I'm increasing power slowly. And as you can see the train is very slowly starting to accelerate due to a very heavy load that we are hauling here. There are no specific special driving techniques for this locomotive, unfortunately, so there's actually not much more for me to demonstrate here. But just to show you, if you wanted to stop, of course, idle the power and apply the brakes. And as you'll see, the brakes in the Class 70 are actually pretty good. And so our speed is coming off fairly quickly. In fact, I think it might be slightly unrealistic. I'm not sure if they would stop that quick with this heavier load in real life. I'm not 100% certain on that. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also check me out on Facebook and check out my Patreon page. Again, thank you for watching.